Hello, and welcome to this third session of the five-part series, The Performance Eye for the SQL Guy. In this session, I'm extending on what's already been covered in the previous two sessions, with another feature released in SQL Server 2014 that can help with the performance improvement in your SQL Server environments. My name is Warwick Rudd. I'm a Microsoft Certified Master and the Principal Consultant with SQL Masters Consulting. You can read more about me on this slide for yourself. Following on from our previous session, the Resource Governor for I.O., we are continuing to look at the four remaining features over the course of this series. In this session, we're looking at the in-memory OLTP. So let's get started. Over the next couple of minutes, I'll be giving you a brief introduction into this potential turbo button for your SQL Server environment. Now I do say a brief introduction because this particular feature is quite large and we don't have the time in this session to do a deep dive into it. But hopefully you will gain enough information for you to consider utilising this feature and go looking as to what you need to know in more depth. So in-memory OLTP, or Hecaton as some of you may know it, is a change to the database engine with the integration of this new feature to provide memory resident data. With the entire table now residing in memory, this means a new data structure for the table and associated indexes. One change that you will, will notice is that when you go to create a memory optimized table, you must have at least one index. This is a big change from your standard disk-based tables. This new structure being used also removes the requirements for locks and latches. Hecaton is utilizing an optimistic multi-version concurrency control approach to allow a transaction to be processed without any blocking. This approach itself is one of the key features as to the performance gains that this feature provides. So some of the terms that we need to be aware of if we are going to look into in-memory OLTP are natively compiled stored procedures. These are the new object type that will be used with your memory optimized tables to achieve the best performance. Interop or interpreted T-SQL is what's used to reference both in-memory optimized tables and disk-based tables. A cross-container transaction is a transaction that accesses both in-memory tables as well as disk-based tables. If you are thinking about utilizing this feature in your environment, the first thing that you need to do is you need to create a memory-optimized file group. This can be done at any stage by utilizing the alter database command. With your table residing completely in memory, you're probably asking how is my data safe? Well, there's two types of tables that you need to consider, durable tables and non-durable tables. Durable tables are fully recoverable to point in time in the event of a crash by using checkpoint files and the transaction log file. This recovers your structure and your data. A non-durable table in the event of a crash only recovers your structure. You're not concerned about the data because you've got a process that's able to load that data up. So this type of table might be uh, used for staging tables where you can utilize the memory optimized stored procedures to quickly load the data, access that data in memory and migrate it across to your production tables. One of the things that you do need to be aware of if you are going to use this feature, any change to your tables requires an outage. So if you need to add a column, drop a column, add a new index, that requires an outage. So you need to be mindful of your SLAs and your uptime requirements. Like we've seen in the previous uh, sessions, we still need to be able to monitor our environment. And this is true with OLTP in memory. So we've got uh, 13 new DMVs that have been made available to us. 11 of those new DMVs start with sysdm db xtp. The remaining two start with dm underscore xtp. I'll leave you to have a look at uh, these 13 DMVs in books online. Carrying on from our DMVs, there are also three new extended event packages which we can use to uh, monitor our environment. Those packages are that we want to have a look at, 
XTP runtime, XTP engine, and the XTP compile. From a performance counter point of view, if you happen to go to Perfmon and look under your SQL Server performance counters, you won't find anything for in-memory OLTP. It has its own memory objects. So you need to have a look at uh, those objects starting with XTP. So let's now go and have a look at a demo to see the type of performance gains that we can get using this new feature. So in this demo, we're going to have a look at uh, first off creating two tables, a disk-based table and a memory-optimized based table. A memory-optimized table is a durable table and we can tell this because we're telling it to be schema and data. Now that we've created those two tables, the first thing that we want to do so that we've got some data in there and get a baseline between uh, loading data into our disk-based table and our memory-optimized table, I'm just going to insert a million rows of data first off into my disk-based table. And we've completed our million rows into our disk-based table. So now let's go and insert the same million rows into our memory-optimized table. And our time is completed as well. So if we now go and have a look at the next thing is we want to be able to delete. Now we all know that deletes are expensive transactions, but let's have a look at how long it takes us to delete those one million rows from our disk-based table. And that took around five seconds to delete from that disk-based table. To go and run against our memory optimized table, we can see that that completed in sub-second. So we've actually seen straight away that the benefits that we can gain from our memory optimized tables. But we haven't seen the biggest performance gains yet. So what we want to have a look at is creating a new memory optimized stored procedure. And it's going to go and uh, insert half a million rows of data. So we've created a memory optimized stored procedure and then the first thing we want to go and do is uh, insert the, um, those rows into our table. And we can see that straight away, sub-second we've inserted half a million rows of data compared to our T-SQL statement which took us about 24 seconds. So that's a huge improvement already. So the next thing we want to have a look at is a um, non-durable table. So we're creating exactly the same thing, a non-durable table and a, a non-durable stored procedure. And with our non-durable tables, if we do an insert into that, we've deleted, or we've just inserted a million rows of data and that took us about one second to load up. In the event of a uh, crash, which is what we're going to simulate here with a restart of our environment, so I'll just kick that off now. Once that uh, comes back up and online, we'll be able to have a look at uh, the difference between our uh, durable table and our non-durable table. Now one of the things that we do need to be wary of, and we're back up and running, Because we are running memory optimized, uh, it does take a little bit more time for our database to recover because it is having to read those uh, checkpoint files and the transaction files to reload that data up into uh, the memory optimized table. And we can see that here that our database is sitting in a recovery state. If we happen to go and have a look at uh, the event log or the SQL error log, we will actually be able to see uh, that it's telling us that it is recovering that particular table. And we can see that, uh, where are we? Attempting to, oh, that's loading. Recovering the database, 1% one com one complete, 
and how many seconds it's going to take for it, for it to complete. Doing a refresh again, we can see that we've completed and if we use our database and we have a uh, look at our row counts, we can see that our durable table has our half million rows of data in it that we inserted and our uh, non-durable table is back and available but it has no data. So what we've been able to see from this quick demo is that the performance gain that we can get from our memory optimized table to one just load data greatly outstrips what we can get from our standard T-SQL. So in summary, with what we've covered off today with in-memory OLTP, we've had a look at uh, some of the terms and uh, new structure of in-memory OLTP and we've had a quick look at a demo on the types of uh, performance improvement that we can gain using the memory optimized store procedures with those uh, in-memory tables to get the most out of our environment. So make sure you stay tuned for the fourth video in the, this five-part series of the Performance Eye for the SQL Guy. And I'd like to say thank you very much for joining me today and I hope to see you on the next video.